the final race one of the 2017 Hark Pro Series Tour will take place at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. But uh, issues before we even got the cars fired. Car number 03 of Antivia Kingray uh, sensed a tire going down on the grid. They uh, backed it up into their pit stall and serviced it before the race began. Kingray would be able to rejoin the grid and start the race with the rest of the field. But uh, already a bit of a gremlin for the 03 machine. Drivers would come to the line as Stavis Cortez would lead them. Everyone in this race is positioned 43rd and back in points. This is the second half of the points field. So this is going to be a good race for the, the best of the rest to try and uh, show why they should be up near the top next year. Nicholas Guerra in the number 97 is going to make a diving pass through that corner and steal the race lead away from Estavis Cortez very early on. Speaking of early on, AJ Green is going to have an early exit to the race. Cold tires are the culprit as he goes sliding off track into the tire wall. Would not even take the green flag. He would be the first car out today. Nicholas Guerra in the lead in car number 97. Fairly confident in this race. As well, it looks like Tyler Faber gets a little bit of contact behind him. Guerra feels pretty fast and he feels he has a good mastery over this racetrack. He's hoping for a solid performance to maybe catapult him up in the point standings. We saw some stack up in Moss Corner. And one of the uh, drivers most affected by this would be Brandon Krasta. Gets turned by Jeffrey Finguy after he slides up wide. Both of them made contact with the wall, so Finn Guy uh, uh, getting his damage out of the way early. Both would continue. Tyler Faber in car number 900 had a pretty good qualifying run. Fourth place was hoping for a Brass Town Ball type day, but some aggressive racing early on is going to result in him getting turned by Alexander Rowe. He's going to collect Aiden Shepard, Derek Hamill, Andreas Allen, and the car is going to scatter all over the front straightaway trying to figure out what is the proper way to go. Turn number one is in Bedlam as Tyler Saber keeps going and watch out for Tony Green! Green is sliding back and forth, so is Ike Durbin. Josh Cooley got around as well. Oh, and Faber is around again! Matt McIntyre uh, got a bit of that. Colin McGovern's around right behind them. And it looks like, oh, that's uh, Benoit Lefair Irvine in car number 15. Looks like all three would get going, but just absolute madness. At the same time that this was going on, Kip hit. Canadian out of Calgary replacing John King, who's uh, still recovering from his injuries from a couple weeks back. He's going to get into the wall. That would take him out of the race early. He was hoping to impress in his home country. That's what happened with the number 900. Uh, just gets sent off track a little bit slow. The 58 car going to make some contact with him. You see the other uh, competitors that got around right behind him. Here's how McGovern got around. Gets turned by the uh, 696 as Antivia Kingray. Close call for him. See, there's uh, Irvine. It looks like he got turned by Al Lagacy in the 01. So he'll get punched into the wall. All three of them would continue. Tommy Turbo just worked his way into the top 10 after all that madness, but engine problems are going to befall the number 3 machine. That's unfortunate for Turbo, who was looking for a solid effort today. You'll have to hope that Chris Dodd, his teammate, can get the deal done in race number 1. But uh, Tommy Turbo, a disappointing end to a disappointing season. Sam Curtis and Jokey Lefton are running next to each other. The double six and the triple six. They're trying to get by Brandon Krasta. Krasta is going to move in front of the 66. Curtis is going to try and move in front of the triple six, but does not clear him. Sends him off track. The 66 is going around, and he saves it. Unbelievable driving by the 66 to recover from that, but he would lose a couple of spots, and the officials may not uh, like the way he cut across the triple six. You see a couple of cars working their way back to pit road from the previous incident. Uh, you'll see that a lot today. Antivia King Ray, we mentioned, uh, had issues on the start. Got to actually start the race and run a couple of laps, but uh, their time would be numbered. As uh, Chester Harvey would be annoyed with the 03 machine in their battle early in the race and send the 03 into the wall. Oh, and gives him another ram. I'm not sure. If there might be some bad blood between those two. King Ray would go out of the race due to this incident. So, uh, King Ray not too happy over the radio as Chester Harvey will get to continue. Three wide battle through the S's as Tony Tablaris, Tony Green, and Brandon Krasta make it three wide, but they wouldn't be the incident. Andreas Allen would go off track into the wall. That would put him out of the race. They would get sorted out with Tony Tablaris getting it done. Another tight battle on track with some a uh, bit of aggressive driving. Bill Liljohn's going to send the number 696 off track and into that exposed wall. That was a rough crash. Officials may not be too happy with Bill Liljohn, who would continue after that. Stavis Cortez and Nicholas Guerra 
are going to battle for the race lead. Estavis Cortez steals it away. Start with some rally cross racing experience. Uh, it's transferred all right into the road racing uh, methodology, but he's uh, currently leading right now. Brandon Krasta has had a bit of a difficult first couple laps. Will finally be put out of his misery in the 09. Sidney Krasta, his teammate, would be running for the championship in race number two, so he'll have to root from the grandstands for that one. Josh Sakuli, similar corner. This would be the trouble spot. Runs a bit wide after uh, Demax washes up track, and he would get into the wall. His teammate's also running for the championship. That's Caitlin Sang in the 07. That'll be in race number two. Stavis Cortez is going to catch some lap traffic in the form of Colin McGovern. 42 has been pretty aggressive with his blocking, and that's allowing the rest of the competition to catch Cortez. Cortez was starting to pull away before that point. There's Wes Jones in the 404, trying to steal that away from him, looking to one of the sides as they go down the Andretti straight away. 404 sees his chance. He's going to get around on the inside line. But McGovern, trying to aggressively block, stay on the lead lap. He's not going to catch a caution. There's no caution in this race. I'm not sure what McGovern is attempting to do. But uh, I think he's just trying to uh, stay in the lead lap and uh, make as many laps as possible, knowing the attrition rate of this event. Wes Jones is going to get it done and finally, uh, well, not quite secured in this corner, but uh, will uh, eventually get by the number 42. Tristan Wilhoy, one of the Denali's, is going to go off track after a tight battle with Freddie Munoz. And that would put him out of the race. A shame for Will Hoyt. Uh, he was hoping for a good run today, but it's been a, a hardship of uh, end of the year. Colin McGovern's blocking. Won't quit. He's going to get turned by Nicholas Barrow. And he goes barrel rolling down the hill. And this is a violent crash for the number 42. But I, I guess it serves him right <laughs> for uh, blocking the Leers like he did. He would walk out of that car just fine, but that was a wild hit. I don't think he was expecting that, but from just uh, blocking some of these drivers. Here's what happens. Looks like Blair just has enough, or maybe the 42 just blocks uh, too aggressively and turns them both around. Blair was not happy over the radio, and Colin McGovern, I assume, was pretty dizzy after this one. He would come to a rest, and that would be the end of his race. So, uh, so much for keeping that spot and keeping it in the race. Justin Carter in the 85 would go off track, and that would end his day. He started off the year pretty well, but uh, unfortunately, both he and Mitchell Carter dropped off as the season went on. Stavis Cortez in clean air is going to catch the 404. He definitely has a fairly quick vehicle out here today. Could be a good opportunity for him. Joshua Michaels in race number one. That's his teammate. Wes Jones, I believe his teammate's uh, Tyler Faber, who's already, well, he's in this race, uh, still racing. A side-by-side -side battle down the Andre straightaway. That's the way... Uh, the fans like to see it. Alexander Rowe uh, lurking back in third place. Cortez is going to get the advantage in this corner. Especially in this set of corners. But Wes Jones is going to really drive it down the outside line. Not going to be able to have it stick. Gustavus Cortez would go back up to the race lead. Good job by Cortez. He's got excellent equipment today. And he feels fairly confident. Leads him back to the line. Rowe is closing in on them. Eugene Demax and William Duncan are going to get together going through the start of the S's. And Demax, heavy contact with that wall. That would put him out of the race. Uh, I guess it's just bad luck being near William Duncan. Duncan doesn't necessarily have to try anything to uh, cause cars to wreck. They just wreck by proxy. Everyone would avoid the 90 and he would limp that car back to pit road to end off his day. Tony Green, car number 32. He's uh, thirsty for a good finish today, and he's going to turn Jack Lagacy, send him off track. Uh, aggressive racing by uh, the Golden Corral machine. Uh, he's uh, trying to get a top 10 finish so, so that the kids can eat free. But it uh, looks like there's uh, blood on the hands of uh, <laughs> that free food. As Daniel Voiles nearly clobbers number 18. He would keep going. A uh, very lucky man in that 52 machine. Carl and in car number one, sitting in sixth place right now. He's doing fairly well comparatively in the points to a lot of these other drivers. Road racing is his specialty and uh, he's hoping for a solid performance today to perhaps work his way into the top 42. Another driver having a good run today is Tony Tavolaris. This is his actual home track, not Calgary. My apologies. Uh, this is where he's uh, born and raised and uh, he's hoping for a good run today. His last good finish was at Calgary in Canada, so perhaps he can catch Daniel Voiles and finish not last in points, and this is going to be a bit of a stack-up, as Tyler Faber is going to hold up Voiles and 
Thomas, and it looks like Luka Obrovac is gonna kind of break that pack up. All of them would save it and keep going, but Daniel Voiles was the big loser on that one, which uh, Tony Tavlaris liked to see. Sam Curtis in the 66 is battling with the number 97 of Nicholas Guerra, and he's gonna turn him! Heavy contact to the wall. Guerra survived that first one, but he just gets taken out by the 66. That would be the end of both of their days, and I think the officials may have a word with Sam Curtis for uh, causing two incidents this race. William Duncan is nice on track right now. He's uh, noted for his road racing abilities. He's having a solid performance today. Annie Thomas was doing all right as well, but uh, engine issue is going to send her out of the race. A shame for her. Uh, now, uh, Tony Tavlarza has his fingers crossed that Daniel Boyles has a similar engine problem, and he can finish not last in the standings. <laughs> Wes Jones in the 404 continues to hound car number 62 as uh, these two cars seem to be fairly closely contested. Alexander Rose still uh, hanging back behind them in third place. I think Jokey Lesson is a little bit further back. Jones is going to make a, a peek to the inside line, not going to jump out of line just yet, following them into the S's. Cortez trying to hold him off and so far being fairly successful in that, as he will continue to lead to the line. Alexander Rose is going to pit much earlier than the rest of the pack, but we're getting a report that is scheduled. Jokey Lassen in car on triple six would inherit third place. He's got some sponsorship on that car this weekend. I believe that's uh, with that Pura Fire Insurance. Uh, a little hard to read that logo, but Jokey Lassen in having a good run today in the triple six, uh, hoping for a somewhat clean event. He would pit the lap a couple laps afterward, approximately four afterward, a little bit later than a, bit, a little bit uh, earlier than the rest of the leaders. Working his way down pit road, though, he would not go without issue. Uh, Allie Nelson, the 96, would uh, get some repairs done to her vehicle after some contact from earlier in the event. And they would make some contact on pit road. Lesson and not too happy with how uh, Thomas was riding the back fender of that car, but both would continue without too much issue. The leaders would make their pit stops on lap number 26. It's projected that they will have to make two stops this race. Though it is theoretically possible to make it on one if you really stretch your, your tires and fuel. There's the battle off of Pit Road, and Alexander Rowe is going to steal it away from Estavis Cortez. Pitting early definitely helped him out. He's going to have to see if that strategy will carry over later into the event. Carl Indumia would inherit the race lead by uh, those guys pitting. He would pit the next lap with Lucas Knight in the eighth. So a lap led for him. But uh, Alexander Rowe is going to inherit the race lead after uh, Indumian cycles out behind them. Cortez is going to get a little bit loose in Moss Corner. But Alexander Rowe, we haven't talked about too much almost all season. He's, he's not usually been the main story, oftentimes out of the race fairly early on. Usually not performing too well, but this is a good opportunity for him to showcase his skills. As uh, the driver, uh, you know, looking to end off his quiet season with a bang. But he's got two other hungry drivers behind him that have slightly better tires than him. So he'll have to see if he can fend them off and see if he can make this pit strategy work. Wes Jones and Nostavis Cortez having an aggressive battle right behind him as Jones is using almost every single inch of the racetrack to try and get by Nostavis Cortez. And I think it might work. Yes, it will. As Cortez is going to slot in behind him. Going through the corner. Interesting incident. As uh, Tyler Faber and Luca Obrovac go sliding out of the racetrack and into the crowd. Here's on board Tyler Faber. Now, uh, may want to send the kids out of the room for this one. This could be scary. Slides right off track into that crowd of people. Knocks a bunch of people over. Luca Obrovac would end up into the wall and so will Faber. Surprisingly, though, both cars would continue. Uh, a lot of the uh, fans in the crowd that were hit were treated with minor injuries. But uh, everyone was it survived that relatively all right but definitely a scary moment in this race Freddie Munoz is gonna spin that number zero two and give up a few positions but still having a good run as Alexander Rose gonna face a bit of a challenge from the 404 really riding that back bumper of Alexander Rowe Wes Jones is not here to play around he wants to win a race and he's uh, trying to charge in that number 36 Motec Ford 404 is looking to make another charge, a little bit of a draft down the Andretti straightaway. Cortez uh, starting to lose some ground on him. The 404's got a lot of momentum. C 
sees an opening. Wes Jones is going to try and muscle his way to the inside of the 36. He's got a nose in. Can he hang on to it through the final corner? Alexander Rose is going to hang on to it for now. And Cortez nearly runs into the back of Jones and slides off track. He will save and keep in the fight for this victory. The dog fight out front between these three drivers as they have just pulled away from the rest of the pack. Jokey Lesson slow on his pit stop, uh, ended up losing a lot of ground on these drivers. A little bit afterward, the battle would still continue, but Alexander Rowe, a mistake, would slide up onto the rumble strip. That would give the 404 a good run going into turn number one. He's going to look to the inside and get down deeper than the 36th of Rowe. Side-by-side -side battle as so we head down the hill. Rose got the preferred line, but the 404 just has a ton of speed going into it. Cortez is going to try and help the 36 around for a bit, but decides to jump ship to the inside line. Help Wes Jones blast past for the race lead. So Wes Jones having a strong vehicle today. He could contend for this victory. Just has to hang on to it. Cortez is going to try and make something happen to the inside of the 36 as Rowe might drop back to third place here. Cortez, great run into Moss Corner. Cuts it nice and close, and Cortez will end up with second place. Now he just has to chase down the 404, see if we can recreate that battle from earlier in the event. Three car incident between Bill Liljohn, Tony Green, and Daniel Voiles. All three would continue racing. Uh, Bill Liljohn would have to make a pit stop to fix some nose damage, and that would uh, cripple his car today. But uh, Liljohn get into a couple incidents today. He's a bit feisty this time around. That wouldn't be the last of these two that lap. Right after that, Tony Green's going to send the 52 car off track with a bit of a swerve. And that would be the nail in the coffin for Daniel Voiles. However, a lot of cars have gone out so far, so Tony Tavares might need to win this thing if he has any chance of catching uh, Daniel Voiles. Jokey Lesanen, Carl Indumian, and Lucas Knight are having an intense battle as uh, these drivers are duking it out for fifth position. Side-by-side -side racing, and Dumian uh, not letting the 66 get by him just yet. Gets the inside line in this corner. Lucas Knight in the 8, trying to use that draft line to get by Lessonen, who's been dropping a couple spots after that bad pit stop. There's Mitchell Carr right ahead of them, as uh, Indumian trying to put the stamp on that, hang on to it. He's got a good car today, and he feels very confident. Knight's going to get by the triple six, and Lesson is going to end up being shoved off the racetrack, and he'll lose a lot of ground. So Lesson is not having too good of a day. Alexander Rowe is going to make another charge at the number 62. I'm surprised. Rowe has much older tires than these guys, about four laps older tires than the Lears, and he's still making these charges. So I'm not sure if he's just not saving them enough or if, uh, if he just has some good equipment underneath him. But side-by-side -side racing between he and Cortez, he's going to dive it low into turn number one. And it looks like he'll be able to clear the 62. For the most part. 62's got the inside line, though. He's actually going to blast back to second place. Can he get by? Side-by-side -side racing. Rose's going to have the advantage going to this corner. He just has to drive it in. And it looks like he might be able to do it here. Just can't seem to shut the door, though, as Cortez uh, finally is going to concede the position. Lucas Knight and Jokey Lesson have been having an aggressive battle for the past couple of laps. Uh, I'll start with that uh, battle for fifth we showcased a little bit earlier. And these two just continue to go after it. This is a battle for sixth place between the two. Lesson though is going to have enough. He's going to turn the eight and whoa! Flip the number eight on the front straightaway. I've, I've not seen a wreck like that, let me tell you. So what happened here, it looks like the eight car is going to get turned by the triple six. Gets too aggressive. And the sheet metal is going to catch on the wall and just flip that car in awkward angle. Like I've, I've not seen something like that before. But here's on board with Lucas Knight. See what he saw in this one. He was probably just as surprised as anything. Flips the wall, and yeah, it looks like the nose just like hooks onto a, some, uh, maybe a division in the wall or, or something. Ends up flipping over. But that wasn't it for Jokey Lesson. The very next lap, he would wreck Tony Green, and that would collect William Duncan into the, the mess. All of them would continue racing, but William Duncan not happy over the radio. As uh, he had a strong top 10 car, he would have to go and make a pit stop. He was on board with the number 83, see what he saw on this. Just tried to sneak by, couldn't get it done. They have to make some extensive repairs on the 83, but they would get him back out on track. Tony Green's been getting bumped around today, and I think the officials might have something to say to Jokey Lesson after this race. He's had a couple of uh, 
Really aggressive Rex. And here's a close call. <laughs> like Durbin and Tony Tavolares do not give up their side-by-side -side battle to get by the 83 of William Duncan. Finally, Durbin's going to have to concede the uh, spot, but after they nearly wreck going into the previous corner. The 36 of Alexander Rowe is going to follow that 62, but he would make his final pit stop on lap number 41 out of 64. He's going to have a decent stretch to go. So we'll have to hope that this strategy works. I'm not sure, though. Tony Tavolares in car number 69 in a tight battle with Freddie Munoz. And this thing would get pretty entertaining. He's going to look to the inside of Munoz through turn one and two. Side-by-side -side racing all around this racetrack throughout this entire race. Even with heavy attrition so far, they are still close and battling for spots. Munoz is going to make the dive through that section of the course. But Tony Tavolares is trying to punch back. There's the uh, car of Sebastian Torres hoping one of them makes a mistake and he can catch both. A side-by-side -side racing between these two competitors. Tony Tavolares has had a pitiful season. One of the worst se seasons in Hark history. He's looking to prove himself with a solid top 10 performance. Freddie Munoz, the rookie, had some okay runs later in the year, but fairly quiet at the start of it, however. But Munoz looking to prove that he's a driver that can win in Hark. He wants to do so by working his way up to the front. Side by side, Tony Tavolares gets a bit of an advantage down the Andretti straightaway. Torres not really backing either of them. Looks like he might, uh, by default, go to the inside line, but he's been crossing back and forth. Tavolares uh, did not get a good run into the corner. That's going to allow the 0-2 of Freddy Munoz to try and momentum his way around the outside. Now to the inside. Tavolares is going to have that advantage. He's going to crowd the number 0-2 up the racetrack. Door banging coming to the line. And this is still not settled out after an entire lap of racing. This is not a short circuit. These two have been going at for a long time. Tavolares still trying to cut off the number 0-2. Munoz is not going to have it. He's going to give him another whiff of the door. And that's going to allow the 0-2 to get by him as he steals that momentum away from Tavolaris. What a battle out here today. That is a, a real entertaining bout on track between these two drivers that are desperate to end off the season with a solid performance. Wes Jones in car number 404 is going to catch some heavy lap traffic. Tyler Faber has just barely been meeting minimum speed. Allie Nelson, the 96, has had extensive damage to her vehicle. And uh, Benoit Lacerre Irvine is uh, still fairly on pace, but uh, far behind the rest of the pack and might go a lap down shortly. But this lap traffic is the dream for the rest of the pack as Wes Jones had just pulled away by this point. As you can see, you can't even see second place from here. There's uh, William Duncan, another slow car that he had to work his way around. Then there's Bill Liljohn behind them, so... Huge lead for the 404 as Estavis Cortez having a hard time with lap traffic. Another hard time is going to go to Sebastian Torres. He had just gotten by Tony Tavolaris for the position, overdrives the corner. He would actually continue, one of the few drivers to hit that wall and continue racing, but that car would be off pace afterwards. You can see what Estavis Cortez has to deal with. Heavy lap traffic, just a train in front of him. Tyler Faber, William Duncan, and Bill Littlejohn, all of which have had a lot of problems today or uh, have had problems happen to them. Bump and run by uh, William Duncan, trying to get by his fellow modified in the number 30. That's going to allow Cortez to sneak by, however. Whoa, Carlin Dumin goes off track right behind the number 80 of Mitchell Carter. He's going to pit from third place. He's having a solid performance in that Lithia number 80 machine. We'll have to uh, maybe look back at that number one. So he's going to follow the number 78 of Obrovac. He's going to get way too off track, scrape the wall, but he would keep going. Gets it, uh, you know, recovered, and uh, will not lose too many positions from that one. Shortly afterward, you would see the leaders come down pit road for the final time, lap number 50. Wes Jones would pit, and then there's the huge cap all the way uh, to second place as Cortez would get by some of those lap cars and start to make up some ground as the 404 would struggle with the 15. Alexander Rowe, another battle off pit road. He's actually going to improve from last pit stop. And he's going to pull ahead of the 404, but still stuck behind that 15 of Irvine. He'll have to try and dispatch him quickly so that uh, he has a buffer between he and the fresh tires of Wes Jones. He'll look around to the outside, but uh, Irvine's still going to hang on to it. Tony Tavolaris, though, would be leading at this point. This is the first lap that Tony Tavolaris has led all season. He's going to do it right about 
now. Tony Tavolares finally leads the lap this year. Uh, something he wanted to do all season long. He would have to give up the lead for his pit stop, though, to Alexander Rowe, who is still battling with that number 15 machine. Irvine is just relentless, not letting up. Uh, similar move to uh, Colin McGovern, which uh, we know how well it went for Colin McGovern. So Irvine trying to hang on to this one. He knows it's late in the race, and uh, he's trying to stay on the lead lap to perhaps catch some more attrition late in the event. Uh, Granted, if he isn't the attrition first. This is going to allow Wes Jones to reel in the number 36, though, as Rowe is just struggling. He, can't, he just cannot get the drop on the 15 of Irving, who is blocking like mad. Going to Moss Corner, this could be a good opportunity for the 36 to throw the bump and run. Not going to be able to get to the back bumper. He's actually going to go way too wide in that corner. And that's going to allow the 404, the Sky Vodka machine, to steal the race lead back as Wes Jones is now leading once again here at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Ike Durbin, car number 86, running in fifth place. A great performance for him. Got his first win of the year a couple races ago. Electrical failure on that machine would have to send him to pit road. He gets a bump from Freddie Munoz, who uh, was not expecting the, the slowness of the 86. He would get back into the race, but he would lose a couple of laps as they uh, try and figure out what caused the electrical issue. Most likely a wire got loose somewhere on that. The 404 just can't seem to get by this number 15. He's pulled ahead of the, the 36 of Rowe, but just by sheer force of will, just pushing the 15 along. Irvine is relentless, though, not giving up the spot. Contact as the 404 is going to try and pull the bump and run on the 15. Irvine's going to cut off the 404, and the leader is wrecked. Wes Jones is in the wall. Unbelievable, a lap car has cut off the race leader and has wrecked him. Wes Jones is furious. Unbelievable. I don't know what Ben Wallace there, Irvine, was thinking here, but he's going to take both himself and the leader out of the race. Wes Jones had led the most laps today at this point, and that's going to allow Alexander Rowe to take the lead back. He's got a pretty huge advantage over his competitors, but here's the major caveat. He has older tires than everyone else in the field. So we'll have to see if he can hold up in these last eight laps of racing. Sebastian Torres would fall a lap down after his damage, go off track, and that would be the nail in the coffin for Sebastian Torres as he would finally go out of the race there. We have to give a shout out to Tyler Faber. He's not been running great today, but the fact that he is still running after the day he's had is a miracle. It all started on lap number one. Got turned around there, got heavy damage. He ends up off track, crashed into an ambulance and some pedestrians. Has been the bane of the leaders, turned several times. He is still on track and running inside the top 20. So Tyler Faber has a no-quit attitude. And uh, I think uh, <laughs> that is at least something to be proud of for that number 900 team as they look to end the season running in that number 900. Alexander Rowe has a lead, but it is shrinking. That is Mitchell Carter. We didn't really talk about him too much today, but Carter has found himself in second place after pit stops. He pitted a bit earlier than Cortez and Jones, so it looks like early pitting was the strategy. Carter is catching him, though, and with only a couple laps to go, Rowe's going to have to really work to hold him off, and look at this contact late in the going. Hard contact for Ike Durbin and Al Lagsey. They're going to get crossed up on lap number 61, and they're going to go into the wall. Two laps to go. Alexander Rowe is out front, has not yet won in the Hark Pro Series. Mitchell Carter looking for a victory as well. He wants to end off the season with a bang. These drivers looking to gain as much ground as they can. Carter started off the year fairly well, was one of those drivers that was considered a potential championship competitor, but around midway through the year, the performances started to drop off, and he really fell out of the title hunt and out of the top 42. Alexander Rowe was never truly in it. He uh, struggled a lot throughout this year. Ended up a little bit further down in the rankings. Always kind of glossed over on the uh, highlight reels. But here he is leading. Here comes Mitchell Carter, though. He's got fresher tires. He's making some huge lunges to car number 36. He knows time is running out. We have less than two to go. Savas Cortez is too far back, but he's going to have to hope that maybe these two get into each other 
and perhaps Rex, so he can snoop, uh, swipe in and uh, steal the lead away. Alexander Rowe trying to hang on to it. He's a little bit loose, entering the S's. Car number 80 is going to get right to his back bumper. Will he play it clean? Or will he maybe try and send the 36 off in the final corner like so many other drivers have had happen to them? He looks to the inside. White flag's in the air. Mitchell Carr got a nose in underneath. Not able to capitalize just yet. He's going to fall in behind the number 36. He's got to try and find that opportunity. Can he get it done? Alexander Rowe. He's got older tires by about four or five laps on the number 80. Can he make it happen? Perhaps he uh, let off a little bit after... Uh, Irvine got allowed uh, the 404 to get by him to try and save some tire. But here comes Mitchell Carter. He's giving him everything. Looks to the outside. The 36 is going to block. Carter following close behind right to the back bumper. He could send him out of the way here. What's Mitchell Carter going to do? Carter is going to overdrive the corner. Some distance between he and the 36. A mistake for Carter is going to put a couple car lanes between them. Carter is going to have to try and use the draft to catch up on the back straightaway. Last time down the Andretti straightaway. Alexander Rowe in the lead. He's going to improve that lead by a, by a car length or two. Carter, last ditch effort. He's got to catch him in the S's. If he can't, this is all Rowe's. Final couple of corners. Alexander Rowe with a huge lead. Carter, a bit loose, not gaining enough. Through the final corner, Alexander Rowe. If he can make it happen here, he does. Alexander Rowe is going to win. Alexander Rowe, congratulations. First career Hark Pro Series victory and did it in style. Played pit strategy perfect today. Had a fast car, had the tires when it counted, and saved enough at the end to stay ahead of Mitchell Carter. A valiant effort by Carter right behind him as well as he will head to victory lane as the final race one winner of the year. Good job for Alexander Rowe. Alexander Rowe would win this race. Mitchell Carter finishes a close second. Estavis Cortez would finish in third, followed by Freddie Munoz and Tony Tavilar is his first career top five. Carlin Dumi in a solid sixth place run, followed by Jokey Lessonen in the triple six. Chester Harvey, despite controversy early on, he would finish in eighth place, followed by Tony Green, a top ten for him. And Blake Camphausen, didn't talk about him much today, but he would survive to finish in tenth. Race number two is going to decide the championship on the Ottoman Empire channel. Check it out there by checking the link in the description. Until then, it was a pleasure doing race number ones. We will see you next season.